the uh, experts in the Mopar brake world. Today we're going to talk about 1970, 71, and 72 uh, B&E bodies. These original disc brake cars came with these two-piece rotors, just like all of them, uh, the A, B, and E bodies, and the C bodies. These cars were equipped with pin-style calipers. They aligned the calipers and they float back and forth. Street term was floaters, and they use these pin style brackets right here. Uh, the original rotors, of course, were two piece, slightly less than uh, 11 inches diameter. Here we have a step up. We have a one piece rotor that fits on the original spindle. Uh, we have these uh, plain, drilled and slotted. And for a long, long time, since the 80s and stuff, people have been doing a disc brake upgrade on these cars. And basically the only way we had to do this was take some 1976 and up rotors. These are uh, 1175 rotors, often called the, the big rotors in the Mopars and stuff. They also required the large style pin caliper brackets. These are so slightly larger and move the caliper out another three quarters of an inch. But in order to run these rotors for decades and stuff, uh, these are small bearing, small bearings original spindle. And these rotors right here were designed for the 73 and up spindle where the inside bearing is slightly larger. So in that case, what you have to do is you have to run bearing sleeves on your 70, 71, 72 in order to run these rotors. Well, been thinking for about a year. What if you could put a maximum rotor on there? Big dog rotor, I call it. That used the factory bearings fit on the factory spindle with no Mickey Mouse stuff and using factory parts. Well, I did it. What we have here, friends, is 1175 rotor. So that means that it fits all the 15 inch wheels, factory or whatever. It's 1175. And it's just like the super high performance rotors today. This rotor right here is an inch and a quarter wide by a big dog rotor. Now, friends, we step back to this 1175 that for 25 years has been considered an upgrade and the best that you can go. Look at that, my folks. The new rotor dwarfs completely dwarfs what was considered factory top of the line. Yes, my friends, this rotor bolts on a factory 70, 71, and 72 spindle. This rotor it's been made by a nationally recognized company. So, there we go. We have 1175 rotor, an inch and a quarter wide, mounted on our original spindle. We get to maintain our pin style, we use a set of large pin calipers. Chrysler did make some, excuse me, Kelsey Hayes made some floating calipers that were really wide for a wide rotor. So, all we need is the rotor. calipers and pins off the shelf and off the shelf caliper brackets 
once again, three items. Factory off the shelf pin brackets. Factory off the shelf large pin calipers. And my rotor. And we have a factory big dog rotor kit. Once again, my friends, look at the comparison. They're not even in the same league. Like I said, no Mickey Mouse, no spacers, no giant wheels, all that problem. Lots of people out there, three or four of them making these big rotor kits and stuff, 12, 13 inch rotors. They still don't even have near the mass of this thing. And it's all about mass in brake rotors. We're trying to take kinetic energy and we're trying to turn it into heat energy as fast as we can with the maximum heat sink. And here it is, my friends. This is the maximum. All right? Uh, give me a call, 817-691-5996. If you have any technical questions, and I'll be more than happy to help you out, my friends. This uh, big dog rotor kit, uh, the two rotors, the two calipers, with the pins, the shoes, and everything is going to come in right at about $650 to $700, and you will dwarf everybody anywhere you go. Thank you.